Hello my little cupboard mice, it's Carla, and today we are doing tour on the floor. Pantry tour, that is. <laughs> when we get done with the tour, I'm gonna go back through and pull some ingredients to show you how to make my pantry pasta pesto nesca. I really want to take you inside my kitchen cabinets because I am obsessed with organizing them, and I have, over the years, developed my own personal system for keeping things straight, knowing when I have things, knowing when I'm out of them, and knowing where to find everything. This side of the pantry is what I call wet dry. So these are all dry storage ingredients. They're things that are shelf stable, they're things that don't need to be refrigerated, but they're things that are wet or liquid or partially liquid. <laughs> At the bottom, I've got things like hot sauces, oil, ghee, you know, different kinds of vinegars, syrups. I have like chicken broth base. I've got, you know, things that are pourable. This is some oil that I used once for frying and I poured back into the bottle because I could fry again. All those things are like wet. This middle shelf, for no apparent reason, it's just like the height of the jars. This has canned tomatoes. It's got more hot sauces. I've got honey. I have shrimp sauce, condiments, harissa, two kinds of harissa, palm sugar, tomato paste, tahini, three different kinds of tahini, <laughs> um, chili crisp, very important peanut butter, and then um, canned fishes. So they're wet, but they're dry. Wet, pourable, liquid, paste, semi-hydrated. All of those things are on this side. And then this is my like, I'm not a good mom for snacks. Like we never have like real snack foods around. This top shelf is what passes for our snack shelf. Um, and it has some toasted <laughs> nuts. And then it's got ingredients for putting into smoothies. So that's why, you know, there would be on your snack shelf um, <laughs> psyllium husk and ground chia seeds because we throw these in smoothies. Dates are back there. Um, seaweed snacks, roasted salted peanuts, protein powder. And then because it doesn't fit anywhere else, that's where I keep my backup kosher salt. Snack shelf lives in wet dry, although technically it should probably be in dry dry. If I have a snack, that is where you will find it. Now we are in dry dry. These are things that are dry. They're dried out, they have no moisture in them. Mostly things that are in boxes or would come in like a pouch as opposed to a can or a bottle. Starting from the bottom, I've got rice and noodles. So your Italian style pasta, but also rice noodles. I have some couscous, I believe. I have some wheat noodles. I have a big bag of sushi rice. Back here, I also have um, some dried mushrooms, which are really amazing for all kinds of broth. I have seaweed and I have some fermented black beans. Those are down there with rice and noodles. For an unknown reason, I also have fine salt over here. So, you know, it's fine. It is a dry dry, but why isn't it with the other salt? We just don't know. This shelf is nuts, dried fruit, and beans. So one thing that you will know about me if you live with me is that I love to transfer into a new container. And when transferring into new container, I also really do enjoy the Sharpie and masking tape lifestyle. She loves to downsize <laughs> and to relabel because if you can downsize, you're taking up less room in your cupboard. If you create space in your pantry, then it's a lot easier to know what you have and to find it as opposed to having like, you know, 10 of everything and then you're just climbing through piles and piles of stuff to figure out what kind of stuff you have. So I've got dried fruit, raisins, barberries, candied ginger even, if you have an upset tummy or maybe you're making a molasses cookie. 
I have two kinds of pozole because God forbid anyone would ever run out. And this is where I have beans. So I have some black garbanzos. I've got some whatever these were from Balsam Farms. I've got dal. I have great green split peas back there. Okay, and then the top shelf, it just says grains. So guess what? Popcorn. Popcorn is a grain. And I have three different kinds of popcorn. She's got oats, barley, farro, polenta, semolina, shredded coconut, ordinary old breadcrumbs, and kasha, which I don't even really like. So recapping dry dry, they're dry storage things that are themselves dry. Dehydrated, no moisture, no pouring, no pastes. Dehydration is the key in dry dry. So now that I've given you the pantry tour, I will give you the tour of what I would make from the pantry when I didn't think I had anything in the house, but I wanted pasta. <laughs> so I will start in dry dry with the pasta. I am also going to grab golden raisins, walnuts, panko, over here in wet dry, some chovies. So from up on the counter, I'm gonna grab some garlic. My olive oil is already on my caddy. All right, it wouldn't be like desperation pasta without a rummage in the fridge. It's nice to be able to add something fresh, even if it's just like a throw together pasta. I have some Swiss chard stems that have been languishing. So I'm taking those. I'm gonna take a lemon and parm. I also want olives. Delicious in pasta. <laughs> All right, any desperation pasta has to start with a tall pot of pasta water. So that's going over there. Most desperation pantry pastas, you should really not have a plan. And like, if you don't care for what I put into my pantry pasta, let this just be a roadmap to your own journey. If you didn't have Swiss chard stems, you could use some other unknown, slightly crunchy thing that you have in your refrigerator. I want things to cook quickly, so I'm gonna cut them fairly finely. Swiss chard stems are delicious, so you should be saving them. I think I put the leaves into the last batch of pasta fagioli that I made. Okay, beautiful, gorgeous, lovely. Just gonna scooch those aside. Let me start with the raisins. Why are there raisins in my pasta, you might ask. I don't know, there's like an agridolce thing going on here. You've got salty olives, you've got the toasty nuts. This is like a nice earthy vegetal thing. Sweet, sour, salt, bitter, what's gonna be the sweet thing? The golden raisins. I'm gonna chop them up really fine and then I'm gonna cook them out so they get kind of caramelized and savory. It's a secret raisin is what it is. Extra virgin olive oil. Sometimes it's a drizzle drazzle and sometimes it's like a snizzle snazzle. And today it's a snizzle snazzle. Black pepper, which would be in a pantry of sorts. It's in my spice cabinet. And if you would like to see my spice cabinet some other day, let me know in the comments. So I'm gonna toast out this black pepper. Pausing for husband's arrival. We're good? Okay, great. Walk by. Raisins in the olive oil. Fernando, yes, sir. do you want to tell them what you said about the raisins when you tried this for the first time? I said, ooh, secret raisins. <laughs> <laughs> Those are gonna cook out until the raisins lightly caramelize, kind of shrivel even more. They're already turning a really pretty color. I'm frying raisins in olive oil. How bad could it be? I'm gonna add the Swiss chard stems. The shard can cook out for a few minutes and that'll be plenty of time to get the garlic in the pan and make sure that the garlic gets cooked out as well. Delicious. I haven't salted anything yet. Be a good time to do that. And um, Aleppo pepper. You could use 
crushed red chili flake, whatever, just something a little spicy. Well, that's cooking out. I'm gonna sizzle my chovies. Chovies not for everyone. I love the savory saltiness that they're gonna give, but I also think tomato paste would be really good, like to caramelize some tomato paste in this if you didn't wanna use anchovy, but you want some depth of flavor. Just cook out tomato paste until it's like brick red. Handful of walnuts. Kinda as I go, like everything is sort of ending up somewhere between a coarse and a medium chop. It feels very pleasing to me that all of these like bits of things that are cooking down in olive oil and not being bound by a liquid are going to have a similar like size and texture. Before I add the walnuts, I'm gonna add the pasta. Whatever shape is in the pantry is the shape that's getting cooked. Going in with my walnuts and I'm just gonna do about the same amount of panko as walnuts, which was like a handful. Serenola olives. I prefer green, my house, my olives. Again, these are salty, sour, meaty, and umami. Head has definitely gone to a caponata place where you might find an olive. Don't fact check me, as they say. All right, I don't really want like a hot cooked olive, so I'm gonna slice them, just put them to the side. And I'm gonna do some parm. Sometimes you want a microplane, sometimes you don't. All right, so the point that I've arrived in is the point that you would want to find yourself in, which is my sauce or my condiment or whatever the I just made over here is, is done. My pasta is not yet done. So we can take a moment, we can breathe, we can relax, not worrying that we're gonna overcook our pasta before our sauce is done. See how I saved my lemon? I had a cocktail. Some of these. Okay, that was about a cup of pasta water. Now I'm just gonna do what we always do. So a coarse sauce like this is gonna coat the pasta in a different way. You know, there's gonna be PC bits. I'm just gonna add this parm gradually, stirring, tossing, glossing. But even just from adding that amount of cheese and stirring, like there's a creaminess here where there was mere moments ago, like, in a, like a loose oiliness. A little bit of olive, a little more cheese because it was on my board, lemon juice. And with like all of the toasty caramelized flavors, the sweet raisins, briny olives, like the lemon juice is just gonna make everything come to life. This is like pretty good for an emergency pantry pasta, which just goes to show you, if you keep your pantry on lock, then at any time you can create pantry pasta. And if you like caramelized golden raisins and hot green olives, you are gonna love pantry pesto nesca. Mm-hmm. 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 I thoroughly hope that you enjoyed my pantry tour. I hope that it inspires you to like have some real quality time with your pantry. And if you were inspired and energized by the pasta I made, I would love to know what you pull together with the ingredients that you have at home. Sound off in the comments. Let me know what your pantry pasta looks and tastes like. I am very pleased with mine. Have a great day, old mother cupboard. Ha <laughs> ha